Hello, Bible readers. It is Thursday, January 7th. We're reading from 1 Chronicles and John chapter 7, verses 25 to 52. I'm going to start with 1 Chronicles because I think I can sum that up pretty quickly. Um, remember, Chronicles is written for a community returning from exile, and so they're they're reading about, um, as they're seeking to rebuild their own temple in their own times, uh, they're reading about the reign of David, which is leading to, at the apex of his rule, uh, leading to handing over that power to Solomon, who will build the temple. But, of course, building the temple won't only require lots of building materials, it's going to require lots of people power. Uh, what makes the temple holy uh, won't just be objects, but it will be uh, what people do in the temple and how they're relating to God. And so you're going to get a list here now in chapters 23, 24, 25, and beyond about uh, who those leaders shall be, how they are to behave, how old they're supposed to be. As we see, like, for example, in chapter 23, priests have to be 30. You know, that requirement changes in different parts of the Old Testament. Uh, I believe we've already read that priests have to be 25. There's another age somewhere else. And so uh, those kinds of requirements you know, can fluctuate depending on, is there a shortage of priests, um, for example? So that's what First Chronicles is up to. Obviously, David handing over power in an orderly way to Solomon is a whole lot different than how he came into power. Um, John, lots to say. I've learned a lot about the Feast of Tabernacles. <laughs> um, what I learned uh, toward the end of our text yesterday and toward the beginning of this text that we're reading for today, I'm just going to kind of meld those together, but traditions, this context of, of uh, Jesus teaching and where does his, his authority come from and how will that be accepted, that continues to be the theme of this part of John. Traditions within Judaism at this time, especially still true now, traditions were passed on authoritatively by the teachers, and a newcomer teaching in the temple would be known as a disciple of a certain teacher. You don't just have a person show up. They are, their, their credentials are immediately known, like, okay, here's, here's Jason, who taught from Robert. Oh, okay. Uh, here's, that just puts this person in the context of someone else. Uh, at stake are the origins of Jesus's authority. Uh, and of course, everything Jesus says and does has its origins in the Father. Uh, thus, his teaching is the teaching of the Father who sent him. The issue at stake is not whether the Jews accept Jesus, but whether they accept their traditional God, now revealed as the Father of Jesus. Is God revealed in the traditions of the rabbis or in the teaching of Jesus. This is the quandary that the Jews are finding themselves in. Um, those genuinely seeking to do the will of God will be able to make their decision about the origins of Jesus' teaching. Is it from God, or is it from Jesus? And so that's the question they have to ask themselves. The authority of the rabbis claims to reach back to Moses. So this is, this is how... Some people respond to Jesus. Uh, Moses got his teaching directly from God. Thus, the Jews can claim that their teaching is from God through the mediation of Moses. For John's Jesus, the gospel of John's Jesus, there is a direct line from God through Moses to Jesus. In their violent attempt to eliminate Jesus, the Jews are placing themselves outside God's design, partially revealed in the former gift of the law, now fully revealed, perfected, you could say, in the fullness of the gift through Jesus Christ. Jesus can therefore charge the Jews, none of you is keeping the law, why do you seek to kill me? So that, that's the, the issue at hand, is how does, how does Jesus fit in to God's plan? Either you can accept that he is a, a perfection, a, a fulfillment of the law, or you can reject that. Um, let's see. Further on, oh, they are worried that Jesus is going to go into the diaspora. Uh, that is, the Jews who are outside Jerusalem and outside uh, where the Jews could kind of put this guy on trial and eventually kill him. They're kind of worried that he's going he's gonna to leave. Um, 
And these events take, take place uh, around the middle of the feast and it causes disarray. And this is where we find that Jesus causes crisis. The teachings of Jesus, the claims of Jesus, cause conflict, especially among the Jews. Um, violent rejection, conflict, schism, that's what happens around Jesus. Jesus does not come into the world and everything just becomes kumbaya and harmony. Um, this is all leading toward the hour, as the Gospel of John would talk about it. Um, I've already gone almost six minutes. I'll say more, I guess, when, when I get to tomorrow as we continue in chapter 7. Um, it's a very tense chapter uh, in John. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us at all times and in all places.